Hello everyone, thank you for joining us for part 2 of the Jaw Test by Kachali video series. Now we're going to show you how to directly connect to an ECU and perform all the functions that you need to. You can start by highlighting the module that you want to connect to and then hitting the connect icon located on the top right hand of the screen. Once connected, the main screen that you're going to come to is going to be the system identification screen. Here you'll find information such as the VIN code, the engine type, engine number, serial number, and hardware part number. The next icon we can choose is the read fault codes icon. Once connected, you'll notice that we have our list of fault codes indicated by our priority level. Some examples of the priority level are on the bottom of the screen. We have our fault code information, our counts of the fault code, a description of the fault code, and then the freeze frame data, help, and troubleshooting icons that were previously showed. This check will accept the codes. This will clear out the screen. This will allow you to erase the fault codes. This will allow you to add customized information for the fault code list that you have. This icon here is going to allow you to refresh the codes. And this icon is going to allow you to make comments to the specific codes in the list. The next icon we can choose is the Clear Faults tab. Here you will be able to clear all the fault codes that are stored in the ECU by clicking the check mark here. exit by clicking the X here. The next tab we have is the System Data tab. This tab will give you a lot of basic information. The ECU Data Subsection first tab that we selected will give you a lot of information on the ECU such as engine number, serial number, type, fuel map numbers, and part number. The next subsection is Parameters of the System. This, Data Group 1, and Data Group 2 will all be more ECU and engine information. The next tab that we can choose is the Monitoring tab. The first subsection is Live Data Selection. Here we're going to be able to view live data and make specific selections of what we want to monitor. The list on the left is broken down into categories. The list on the right is each individual parameter that you can view. We have selected all for viewing. We can choose the sort function here which will alphabetically list the parameters from A to Z or we can search in the field box here by using keywords. We can return to the full list by clicking back. We also have a few other options that we can do here. We can select each individual parameter and then hit the display selected measurements icon and that's going to allow us to watch only the parameters that we intend to see. We can exit by clicking the accept button. We can also view it in a graphical view. When monitoring in graphical view we can stop the recording, we can reverse the recording, or we can fast forward return by hitting the back arrow. Another option that we have is an interactive view. By selecting the parameters that we want to see and then hitting the interactive view icon, we can now see an interactive view of the specific parameters that we chose.
We also have the opportunity to hide duplicated measures. In other words, if we have multiple parameters that are very similar, we can hide those measurements. We can also select a new group here, which will create a session for future use. By selecting the new group and typing in the name of the session, we can now save that by clicking the check mark. We can return using the back arrow. Once returning, the second icon that we have here would be the custom one. This would be the one that you just created. This is a session that you just made, named for future use. We can now monitor these specific parameters and only those parameters. We can show the interactive view by clicking this icon there, or we can modify the group by clicking the icon here. When modifying the group, we can add or remove as many or as little parameters as we choose. From here, you will rename the group and press the check. We now have an updated group of parameters that we can monitor. The next one is the voltage sensor signals. This is going to give you a continuous monitor of all your voltages from all of your sensors. Next we have the system display. Here we will choose one of the options, highlight and check. Here you will be given a 2D graphical view of sensor placement, fuel flow, and components. You can switch between views by selecting the icon here. As you see here, we have an after treatment 2D graphical view, which will give you component locations and exhaust flow, as well as readings from each sensor. The next tab that you can choose is the Actuate Components tab. Here you can perform multiple actuations with multiple components. For example, the Intake Throttle Valve or PWM Pulse Width Modulated Signals. Here are a few examples. Next on the list is the System Checks. Here's where the majority of your tests were going to be, such as cylinder cutout, cylinder balance, compression tests, etc. When selecting the specific test, you will be giving a test description, an example, and a component location or ID. You can add customized help by clicking the icon here. Here you will get interlocks on what the test has to have in place in order for the test to perform. Follow the prompts. Now the test will begin and give you the results as shown. You can also view this in the graphical view. When finished, select the quit. And now you have a list of results. The next tab on the list is the maintenance tab. Here you will find the particulate filter regeneration and a few resets that you can perform. When selecting a specific reset, it is a possibility that you will have to activate expert mode. This will allow you to perform the test. You will do so by clicking the box and entering in your expert mode activation code. Then you will click the activate expert mode tab. You can then click the accept icon. The last tab on the list is the calibration tab. 
Here you will be able to form calibrations that are specific to the each individual ECM that you're in, such as injector coating or EGR differential pressure sensor. You can also read or modify these parameters. That brings us back to the main screen and I want you to keep in mind that all the tabs to the left function the exact same way that they did in video one. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.